So the one thing that I keep hearing as an artist is the saying, practice really makes perfect. But in today's video, I actually wanted to break down that saying and ask myself and you guys, does practice really make perfect? And whilst I'm actually talking about that, I'm going to be painting an otter in watercolours. And I chose this piece because it really didn't go to plan, even though I've had a lot of practice with watercolours. So I really do hope that you can enjoy this tutorial and topic of discussion today. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is probably the most obvious thing, and that is whether or not the statement, does practice make perfect, is really true. Now personally, I think to an extent it is a fair statement to make because with a lot of practice, dedication and time, you can really improve at anything you are doing. And if you are an artist, then really practicing and refining your skill can lead to a great outcome and opportunities for you. Now we all have to start somewhere and if particularly you are a beginner at art, you probably won't have had a lot of practice using certain mediums or materials or have created much artwork, so by practicing your skills and methods, you're probably going to make a lot of improvement and development as you're practicing these skills. But the one thing I think we need to think about is whether there is really such a thing as perfect. I think when it comes to art, because art is so diverse and there are so many different styles of art, it's almost impossible to define what perfect actually means. So I'm sure you've already heard of the saying that nobody is perfect and I think for art that statement is so relatable because how do you define art? There are so many artists in the world, so many art styles and different types of art, so different people will like different things. So what I mean by that is one person might really like realism and might really connect to one artist's work and think that their work is perfect, whereas someone else might really like sculpture work and think that that is a definition of perfect. So even if you come across a really skilled artist, can you really say that their work is perfect? So the next point that I wanted to make about this is whilst practicing your art skills can be a good thing, it can also be a bad thing as well, because if you think about it, if you are continuing to practice the same skills, then how are you going to develop your skills in other areas? Also, if you are someone that does practice quite often, then another downside is that you could actually be repeating a lot of your mistakes. So what I mean by that is you could be picking up a lot of bad habits by doing the same thing over and over again, rather than looking at where your strengths and weaknesses are. So a really good method you should try and incorporate to get effective practice with your art skills is to really look at the areas you are good at and the areas that you think could be improved. A good way to do this is when you have finished an art piece, study that finished piece and try and pick out a few things that you think worked really well. So perhaps you might think a certain technique you used turned out really well, or you're happy with the colours you've used. Whatever it is, just make sure that you can see the positives in your work as well. I think artists can be really self-critical and that isn't always helpful and won't make for effective practice because you will become disheartened and demotivated. So what you need to try and do is be constructive with your own criticism so that you can really get the benefits from learning and practice. So instead of telling yourself that your artwork is not good and there isn't anything of value that you can take from your work, try and pick out a few things that you think can be improved, but don't overload yourself with criticism. Try and pick out between three to five things that you would like to practice on for next time and go about doing that so that you can set yourself some goals and targets to achieve. So you might have decided that you'd really like to get some practice drawing eyes as you feel that that area is letting you down. So take the time to just focus on drawing eyes and see how much you can improve on. I think setting yourself some goals and targets can be a really good thing because it gives you something to work towards and also for me personally setting myself targets makes me feel more motivated to try and achieve those goals. The good thing about setting yourself targets is that those targets are set by you, so they are personal to you and you can decide what you'd like to base your targets on and when you'd like to try and achieve those goals by. Also, targets are really good not just for the short term but also for the long term as well and I think that that is really important because practice is something that will take time and some things will take longer to improve at than others. I think another good way to implement effective practice is to be experimentational. So what I mean by that is to try experimenting with different mediums and methods because that will not only enable you to try something new, but you might actually find that a different medium or method suits you a lot better. 
For example, I'm really trying to practice drawing animals and get better at drawing animals realistically, and a few months ago I tried using solvent for the first time, and I can honestly say that despite feeling a little bit cautious to try it at first, it actually is my preferred method for drawing animals. So don't be afraid to try new things because it's all a part of growing and developing and you might find an art style, medium or method that really suits you. And if there is anything that you don't like, then at least you gave it a go and you know what you like and don't like. Now if you are someone that doesn't really know where to start when it comes to trying different methods and materials, then a good way to try and learn more about different art styles is to research all of the different ways that you can experiment with art. When I was studying art at school and college, I actually spent a lot of my time in the library reading up on lots of different artists and there are a lot of really great books out there that give a lot of helpful insight into the different artistic paths that you can explore. A lot of books also contain pictures and photographs of artists' work and also step-by-step -step guides on different techniques and methods that you can try out for yourself, so books can be a really great way to get inspired. You can also use the computer to research artists online or even watch artists on YouTube to see what sort of techniques, methods, materials and art styles they are using to create artworks. YouTube is a great tool to use to connect with other artists and there are also a lot of really helpful art videos on YouTube that can suit all ages and abilities so even if you are new to art there should still be things that you can try out. I also really love Pinterest because there are so many creative people out there and I think Pinterest is particularly good if you are someone that really wants to try something new, maybe even something that you've never done before because it's all about trial and error on Pinterest and sharing your creations. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy this video then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you never miss an update from me. Don't forget that I upload art related videos just like this one every single week so if you don't want to miss out on any of the action on my channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button now. I have a full list of all the products, materials and equipment that I used as well as the links to my other social media accounts in the description box down below so please do check that out if you want to but as I said thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye everyone!